Welcome to USA Football's Coach and Coordinator Podcast, where top football coaches from around the country share their stories, philosophies, concepts, and strategies to help you get better on and off the field. Now, here's your host, Keith Grabowski. Hey, coaches, before we get going today, I just wanted to thank you for all you've been doing to support this podcast. And we have an incredible lineup coming up here. We have just about every major college conference represented. We have a ton of FBS coaches, Division II coaches, Division III coaches, some great high school fo- football coaches coming on the podcast to share with you and help you grow professionally during this time. I really appreciate all of you asking your questions on Twitter. Please follow me at Coach K Grabowski for our daily updates on our guests and your opportunity to ask questions. We will read them on the show and attribute those to you. Um, so please contribute to the show as much as you can. I also want to talk to you a little bit about our football development model, which is something we've rolled out here at USA Football. And this is really for you to uh, be able to help your youth football programs develop. It's about a long-term athlete development plan, something that comes off of the American development model, which is something that the USOC has put together. The idea is that we're able to teach skills in a progression starting at the youngest ages. We're also looking at the different game types we have, whether that's flag, which is non-contact, limited contact games like padded flag or tackle bar, and full contact, and the right progressions for contact teaching there as well. Be sure to check out all we do at footballdevelopment.com and check out what we're doing with the FDM, the football development model, at usafootball.com backslash fdm.usafootball.com. Joining me on today's podcast is Fergus Conley. Fergus Conley has been on a couple times here. He's worked in college football. He's worked with NFL teams. Always has some incredible insight into the coaching profession, into strength and conditioning, high performance, really all those areas. He is a guy who is a thinker, and I'm excited to have him share some ideas that are impacting us right now. So, Fergus, thank you for taking the time and joining us again. No, thanks for having me on again. I appreciate it. Coach, the the opportunities right now, we all have an opportunity, I think, if we look at this the right way. It's something unprecedented. We've never had to deal with this before. But there are opportunities for us as coaches, for us with our teams to move ahead. For you, what have you thought about and what do you see as some specific opportunities now that coaches could, I guess, take advantage of this situation? Yeah, so it, you just summed up actually the most important point which is you know what is your mindset going into this you know the current situation we're in and sure it's tragic and it's serious but you know you have to adopt a very pragmatic mindset you can't be overly optimistic you know in terms of you know when this is going to end it could be we don't know it could be four weeks it could be two months Uh, and you can't be certainly cannot be pessimistic and defeatist about it so you know my attitude always when things like this happen are okay good let's look for the opportunity and from a coach's perspective it's a wonderful opportunity to sit back and reflect on two things one is you know you as a coach and what areas can you improve on and re- and the key word i think coaches should take away from this situation at the minute is authentic awareness to have the awareness to sit back and look at themselves as a coach to critically profile themselves and okay say you know I'm really good at this these are some things I'm not so good at they're not weaknesses they're opportunities for development and I've got time now time is the most valuable thing in the world I've got time I'm at home how can I use this time to develop other aspects of my coaching skill set that might be developing communication techniques learning about psychology learning about behavior that are going to make me an even better coach when I finally get back on the on the field so from a coach's perspective from a continuous professional development perspective this is an opportunity you know to get up in the morning and to learn about areas that you normally would not have because look at we know the coaching profession you know you get up early you go to bed late you get you're working on minimal hours of sleep But on the other hand, now you've got an opportunity maybe to get a little bit healthier, take some time and to learn. And, you know, from a 
th- there are three areas that just you know recently mm-hmm. been working with some groups and and the three areas that we focus on are professionally so usually your hard skills are things you're really really good at you know you can coach your position or your your oc or whatever but then what are the other soft skills i spent a lot of time with coaches helping identify okay what are the soft skills that i can help you develop that will make you even better at what you do and then on the personal side you know there is no coach out there who would not benefit from spending a little bit more time working on their own health and lifestyle. And this is the perfect opportunity to do that, (laughs) you know, so use that time well, get a little bit of exercise as best you can. And then, you know, the third area is just on, in terms of purpose, looking at the bigger picture, but for coaches specifically, you know, what are the soft skills that, that I can work on, that I can read about, that I can learn, that I can talk to people about. And then just on, you know, health, wellness, you know, even if it's just developing a better sleep habit, a better sleep routine, getting some exercise, you know, that's on a personal level for coaches. That's what, what you can work on. I think then from the, the team sport perspective and for, with your players, you know, you, you can help guide your players and facilitate them learning more. And, you know, again, I always break it down, you know, tactically, it's a wonderful opportunity again to help players look at, you know, you know, for example, with high school kids who've been injured long term, you know, I'll often say to them, okay, who's your favorite player? JJ Watt. Okay, well, listen, you're going to be out for six months here with this ACL. What you and I are going to do is by the time you get back playing, you're going to know everything about JJ Watt. You're going to study him. You're going to learn from him. You're going to learn what he does well, like not just his mindset, but you know, his technique, you're going to learn how he's overcome injuries, just like you're struggling with now. So let's do, let's do a mini project, you know, just like you did years ago on some aspect of nature. Well, now JJ, watch your project. That's who you're going to study or whoever it might be. You know, it doesn't even have to be a current player. You know, let's take this and let's, I'm going to help you. You're going to touch base with me over the next few weeks. You're going to read everything you can take, you know, the positives, the negatives, how can you be more like him? And then, you know, you can expand to other players in that position so you know you're making it interesting for for the kids you're making it interesting for them and that helps them develop tactically their game sense as well as then working on and helping them work you know in isolation on their technique you know they can film themselves practicing even if it's just on air their technique and helping them get back into better positions things like that so there's so many things that you can do that really and actually really help individualize the improvement of players. Man, so many great things there, and you know the, the fun part of the, about this, Fergus, is we've talked to so many great coaches over the last three years from around the country, all kinds of different areas, and and just for our, I know we're picking up a lot of new listeners right now. Our new listeners, a few episodes come to mind that we'll link in our show notes. Number one, our past two with you, we'll make sure we link those. As far as the learning, some great advice from Tom McDaniel, who is an Ohio coaching legend, Ohio high school. He's also the father of Josh and Ben McDaniel, Josh, the OC at the Patriots, and Ben's at uh, the University of Michigan. We'll link that. You mentioned, you know, the the priorities in life and getting those straight. We do a series. I'll link the playlist to our home team series. We just did something with Micah Kurtz on, you know, what you can do with your athletes during this time. And we have something from Eric Quorum when he was with the Texans on sleep. All those will be in our show notes. But also, you know, you're talking about that, you know, making sure you're, you're taking care of yourself. I think it's a huge opportunity to you know, health wise, you know, we're on the grind, we're on the go all the time. I know a lot of guys are going through those drive through windows too often. Get healthy, right? The the best part of this, as as I've sat here in my home office, which I always do all week long, was to see all the people outside on on the street, walking with their family, jogging, riding their bikes, like stuff that you don't see at that frequency. So I know a lot of people are taking advantage of it to get healthy. So it's, it's a huge opportunity there. And then, you know, you mentioned athletes, encouraging your athletes to, to film up what they're doing. And certainly they could share that with you and you can help analyze some technique and send it back to them. Like I know my son does that exact thing right now. He's kind of cut off from Getting to his, his uh, baseball, he has some instructors he works on for his infield, for his hitting. And, you know, just yesterday he's out, you know, with a, a buddy and they're working on hitting, they're working on infielding. He just takes his iPhone and 
shoots a few minutes of that and passes it along. So all, all kinds of opportunities there from it. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think, you know, it's easy. The news, you, you could get overwhelmed by the news and sit in front of your TV all day. And, you know, the best part for me in and, and the first few days, I probably was like that. But I've been able to get on the phone and talk with coaches and learn and grow myself as I'm able to record these and share it with, with coaches out there. So all kinds of opportunity, as you've mentioned here during this time. Yeah, I'm almost tempted to tell people to stop watching the news because, man, if you listen to everything that's being told, you wouldn't get out of bed in the morning at the minute. And, you know, you just, you just can't do that. Like you said, there, this is an opportunity. You can always find a positive, even in the bleakest of situations. And there is, there's great opportunity to spend it with your family. You know, this is a time. And what, it, you know, coaches, let's be honest, they're going to be out of their comfort zone. This is not something they're used to. It's going to be difficult. Understand that, you know, you're used to being around the guys and you're used to having things to do. But, you know, reflect on the fact that there's a greater opportunity here to just take some time to yourself. And the, the big positive is, you know, unfortunately, we're all in this situation together. So there's nobody out there doing anything that you're not doing or getting a, you know, a head start on you. So just everybody's in the same boat. It's who can adapt to this the best that's the competitive advantage it's who can adapt to this situation faster and better than the opponent you know you can sit and cry about what you don't control but you do control you know your mindset how you're going to approach this and you can you control exactly how you're going to adapt to this situation so from there fergus you know we certainly can make the most out of this time we're going to come out of this we'll come out of it fine you know just need to listen to all the guidelines that are out there but um, I think there's things we need to be aware of as coaches, and that's something you, you pointed out to me as, as you know before we got going, that uh, you need to be aware of how you handle this coming out of it because I'm sure everybody's going to be looking at making up for lost time, I guess, for, for lack of a better phrase, suggestions or, or things we need to be aware of uh, when this ends. Yeah, so you want to... With your players, just you know, look at it, and and this is what this is what I've done with some of the, the coaches. I look look tactically in terms of developing, like how are you going to develop game sense so you can use film and you can help players do that. You know, you spoke about how players can you know interact with their coaches remotely with you know on technique. You've got an opportunity to help develop you know players mentally in terms of giving them reading material about different things, and then the physical aspect. You know, you can help players with your strength and conditioning coach do some basic things at home to help keep a certain level of fitness. Now, when this all blows over and players come back, the, you know, the temptation is going to be to jump into things very, very quickly. And that's where the greatest risk is. And you're going to see, you know, coaches who don't manage this carefully, they're going to ramp training up very, very quickly. And you will see a lot of injuries and you'll see injuries most likely from, you know, force where players are doing explosive stuff too quickly. And the other injury risk is going to be the change in surface because every time a player changes surface from whatever they're using at the minute, whether it's grass or track, coming back into artificial turf or onto whatever, it's just understanding that the player is going to need time to adjust to the change in surface, particularly today, it becomes more and more of an issue. So just taking your time as players come back and understanding that it's going to be a gradual, steady improvement is what you want. You don't want a sudden ramp and then to lose two or three particularly key players to, to injury. So just recognizing that it has to be a steady, you know, a steady, constant improvement once players come back. So just being really aware of that. And, you know, there are, there are a lot of players, I see a lot of coaches, a lot of players, you know, who are overtrained. We're only, it's only been a week or two since players haven't been able to congregate. Nobody's unfit yet, you know, and it, it's going to take a few weeks before players truly get unfit. Players are going to come back very, very fresh, well rested and ready to train. So all you have to do is manage that loading carefully as they come back. And the teams that are going to win when this does come back are the ones who organize training intelligently, not who do the most straight off the bat. 
And I go, and, sorry, go on. You know, this has happened before, you know, with CBA lockouts before you've seen teams who manage it come back. Yeah. You know, in, in Europe, even in the Southern Hemisphere, like there have been plenty of instances where leagues have shut down because of either foot and mouth or because of bird flu or different things. So if you look at those situations and you look at the coaches who managed it the best, it's the coaches who straight away immediately recognize, okay, there's some things I cannot control here. What can I control? How can I influence those? Brilliant. Let's influence those as best I can. And then when we start back, we start back intelligently doing as much as is necessary, not as much as is possible. Fergus, if, if you would break it down, I guess, into some of those areas that these coaches are going to want to look at as they come back and, and maybe prioritize, like, you know, we're, we're all working on those things now and finding ways to do that, but prioritize the way that we're going to get back into this. Where do they put priority? Where do they put their time? Where do they put the work? Yeah, so from a coaching perspective, I would look at um, – you basically have three, you know, you have, you have teaching moments where players are stationary and then everything else should be broken up into low in, like low intensity and then high intensity or, you know, walkthroughs learning where players are moving. So that's low intensity movement where you're teaching and that's largely teaching. And then the high intensity work, which is, you know, full on maximum intensity work. The key is managing that maximum intensity work as the players come back that's what you have to be careful of if you overcook the speed the explosive move, movements initially that's where players are going to start to get muscle strains muscle injuries so you gradually ramp that up and talk closely with your strength and conditioning coach come up with a, a sensible plan and for coaches it's basically sitting down and saying okay these are all of the things that i have to teach i'm going to start off teaching them low intensity and I'm going to start off maybe with 25% of my time is going to be high intensity quality, really quality work where they're doing it at max speed and at max effort. The other 75% of my time is going to be teaching and education, building that routine, building the habit, building the instinct. And I gradually can increase that 25% over time, but I'm keeping a really, really close eye on my players, how they adapt to that. Are they stiff and sore the next day? Are they too stiff? Are they too sore? Because remember, you only have to win the game. It's not about winning practice. It's about winning the game. And that managing that overload with your players as you come back. And, you know, I don't care what anybody says. You can use all of the technology you want. Nothing beats having a good coaching eye you know, watching players as they come through the door, watching their demeanor, watching their enthusiasm, you know, talking closely with your medical staff and strength staff, what are they seeing? That's going to be your most important tool because most likely you will not have a lot of time and nobody, nobody has data for you to compare to. This has never happened before. So it's not a case. You can't use data you had last year and say, oh, well, they were running this much and they're only running, forget about it because that's when they were at their peak. So this is going to come down to the art of coaching and your experience as a coach and your experience dealing with people. So one thing we didn't necessarily touch on was the, the mental health side of things. And Micah Kurtz gave some suggestions and actually an activity at the end of his conversation with me to address that. And we'll link that in the, the show notes as well. But, you know, there, there is a lot of I guess, anxiety over this time. There's a lot of, of things happening that certainly could affect our mental health, you know, whether it be you're that guy who's used to being on the go all the time and now you got to stay in your house 24-7. So a lot of those issues, I think, worth addressing right now. What kind of advice do you have in that regard? Actually, you can post a link to my TED Talk, which is probably as good an example of what can happen if you don't manage being stuck in your house for you know a number of weeks i think it's i think it's important for coaches like you said we're used to being on the go we're used to you know managing lots of different people but i think it's going to be certainly going to be a challenge for a lot of people it's going to be a challenge not just for coaches but for kids i think it's important to reach out to have those conversations to stay communicate stay connected with people um so that you know Everybody is in this situation. It's not abnormal. People are going to, to get frustrated. 
Um, you're going to get a little bit of cabin fever. You're definitely going to get to know your wife an awful lot better or your partner if you're stuck in the, in the house. And that's a good thing. But I think it, I think, look, this is, uh, it is going to be a challenging time. I think finding humor in it, reaching out to people, just checking in uh, is going to be very, very important. But the most important thing I think for coaches is to recognize, recognize, you know, listen, there are things that are not in your control, but there are things that you do control. And, you know, that's the most helpful thing going, saying, look, I just, these are things I can't do, but there are a lot of other things that I can get really, really busy with that are going to keep me, that I can put my energy into. And I will come out of this a much better coach if I adopt that mindset. And I think that's particularly important, but, you know, simply, you know, simply us having the conversation about, yeah, it's going to be difficult and it's going to be mentally tough for certain people. And it's going to be mentally tough for us all, difficult for us all, but yeah, reach out, find, as I call them, sheepdogs, talk to people and check in on other people. And simply, you know, as coaches, you know, who do some great work, you know, simply reaching out, checking in on others is going to help you so much as well. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's been incredible for me to be able to take this time to reconnect, make some some new relationships with with uh, with coaches, with other people out there, and even just in my own house to be able to to slow things down a bit. You know, spend some time with the kids and wife and all those kinds of things. But the the connection is important. You know, utilize it. What, what's crazy, I think one really good one, because we've been remote now from the uh, USA football office for, you know, a little over a week now, is when we do these Zoom meetings and instead of just talking, when we turn the camera on, there's something about that, and whether you use FaceTime or Zoom, or it, it's, it does provide a little bit more of that sense of connection. So I, I would just from practic, practically doing it, you know, practical standpoint, I'd suggest trying to do that when you make your calls, if you can be on FaceTime or something that allows you to see the person, I think it's really helpful in, in just connecting and getting through this time. Absolutely. And look, you know, with some of your guys that you're going to call, coaches are going to call and, you know, how are you doing? And the answer is going to be, yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> Sometimes it takes guys a, a, a little while to warm up to talk about things. So asking them how their family is and things like that, you know, uh, eventually things come around. So, you know, it's good to give people the opportunity to talk yeah, it's difficult. It's going to be tough on people. It's going to be really tough, particularly for people who are active, who are used to being active. Um, but sharing resources, sharing reading lists, you know, doing what you're doing is incredibly helpful to a lot of coaches. It's going to be, it is, coaches are going to come out of this much more rounded and better coaches, even if it might not appear like that at the start. And it also, you know, it's humbling. It puts sport in its, in its context. It's not the most important thing in the world. There are more important things. It gives you an opportunity to check in on your parents and people like that. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting time, but it's how you choose to look at it. Well, Fergus, you're always doing some great things right now and consulting around the country, helping coaches. You do some stuff digitally as well. So for our guys who want to connect or learn more about all those things you do, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, you can just follow me on Twitter, Fergus underscore Conley, or check out my 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 website and you know if look if there's any anybody who i can help always happy to help good people keep and thanks for reaching out and inviting me on absolutely fergus will you take care I'll, I'll be in touch with you soon i'm sure as we get out of this and maybe talk about some of those ideas and specifics to as that time as as this starts to change back to life uh, being a little bit more normal absolutely take care keith Coaches, again, I want to remind you of what we're doing with the football development model. Please push this down to your youth coaches. I think this is a great way for you to get some organization and structure beyond what you've already done. Uh, check it out, all of our, our program development for youth football at fdm.usafootball.com. Again, check out our systems for blocking, tackling, and defeating blocks at footballdevelopment.com. If you register with your email, you get your choice of three free videos. There's some great things in there. I think things that as you get going again, you can get into the summer and maybe make up on some things that you might have lost if you had a spring ball, if you had time here in the spring to work on football. Some great drills for all those phases of contact. If you're enjoying the podcast, 
please head over to iTunes or your platform and give us a five-star rate. If you have a minute, write a review. We really appreciate it, and we will read your review on our highlight show that we do at the end of the week. Thanks for listening to USA Football's Coach and Coordinator Podcast. For more resources, visit the Coach Performance Center at usafootball.com.